Hello, my friends. I hope you're having a great day. My name is Ezra Anderson, and today we're going to take this lovely picture and learn how to edit like Brandon Wolfel. To learn how to edit like Brandon Wolfel, we'll be using this photo of a woman and this picture of some bokeh balls. If you'd like to follow along with the same images, I've included a download link in the video description. For now, let's come over to the picture of the woman. The first thing we're going to do is work on the shadows in this picture. When Brandon's editing, he likes to keep his shadows from getting too dark. To brighten the shadows in this picture, we're going to use a curves adjustment. To apply curves, we can come to the adjustments icon and then select curves, or we can press Command or Control M. Then we'll brighten the shadows by bringing this circle up. Then we can exit out of this dialog box and see the effect that our curves adjustment is making by turning this layer off and on. Next, we're going to change the white balance in our photo. We'll do this by coming to the adjustments icon and selecting white balance. Brandon typically likes to add some blue and magenta into his photos. So we'll add some blue into our white balance. And we'll also add some magenta. Then we're done with this adjustment and we can see the before and after. We're next going to apply an HSL adjustment, which we can do by coming to the adjustments icon and selecting HSL, or the shortcut is Command or Control U. Then we're going to change from master to just our blues. We're going to make the blues in this photo more of a teal color by changing the hue shift and dragging it towards the right. Then we can also increase the saturation. And when you're satisfied, you can exit out of this dialog box and see the before and after. Another adjustment you can use to edit like Brandon is a split toning adjustment. This adjustment can be found under the adjustments icon near the bottom and select split toning. We can keep the highlights hue over to the left where the red orange is and then increase the highlight saturation. But we'll change the shadow hue to a teal blue color. Then we'll increase the shadow saturation. If you want more of the photo to be considered a shadow, we can bring the balance slider towards the right. This adjustment is now applying some red orange into the highlights and some teal blue into the shadows. That looks good to me, so I'll exit out of this box and we can see how this adjustment is affecting the photo. For our last adjustment to the colors, we're only going to change the color of these lights. I think they'd look better if we change their color from white to teal. To do this, we're first going to add a new pixel layer, which we can do by pressing on this icon. And then we'll press B for the paintbrush. Then make sure you're painting in a teal color. And in the context toolbar, make sure your hardness is set to 0% and your flow and opacity are set to 100%. Then all we need to do is begin painting on the lights. I'll just click once to lay down some paint and then click once again on each of the other lights. I'll make the brush a little smaller for these lights over here by pressing on the left bracket key on the keyboard. Then I'll continue painting on these lights. Alright, so right now this isn't looking very good, but when we change the blend mode from normal to color, then we'll see that the effect is looking much better. Finally, we'll also change the blend ranges, which we can do by pressing on this gear icon up here. We're going to make it so our paint is only being applied to the highlights in the photo. To do this, we'll bring this circle all the way down. If you're not familiar with blend ranges, you can check out our complete beginner's guide to Affinity Photo in the video description where we cover blend ranges in depth. For now though, 
just know that blend ranges are making it so our paint is only being applied to the bright highlights in our picture. When you're done with the blend ranges, we'll exit out, and we can see the before and after with our new painted lights. I'd say our photo is looking pretty good at this point, but Brandon takes his photos to the next level by incorporating special effects. Normally it's better to apply special effects when you're actually taking the picture, but since we weren't the ones to take this photo, we're going to use this photo of some bokeh balls to apply our special effect. Over here, just make sure that you have the layer selected, and then you can copy it by pressing Command or Control C, and then we'll come back over to our main photo and paste it in by pressing Command or Control V. Then we'll press V for the Move tool, and use the Move tool to make this layer a little bigger. We're also going to change its blend mode from Normal to Screen. The bokeh balls add a nice special effect to this picture, but the effect is a little too strong. I mostly like the bokeh balls down here, but don't need the light up here quite as much. To reduce this light, but keep our bokeh balls, we're going to apply a gradient mask to the bokeh picture. We'll do this by clicking on the mask icon, and then we'll press G for the fill tool. Then starting at the bottom, we'll click and drag up to the top. The white part of our gradient means the bokeh ball layer is being completely shown, and the gray part of our gradient means the bokeh ball layer is being partially hidden. If you'd like to hide it more, you can change this gray to a darker gray, or even all the way to black if you so desire. I'm going to keep mine dark gray, so a little bit of the bokeh ball layer is still being shown. And if you want, you can get out the paintbrush, and then you can paint in white where you want more of the bokeh layer being shown, or paint in black where you want it less visible. I also recommend you take your flow down to 10%. This allows you to slowly paint the bokeh effect into the picture without making it too harsh of a transition. I'm going to change my color to black, and then I'm going to paint out some of the bokeh balls over here in this corner where I think they're a little too strong. I want my brush a little bit bigger though, so I'm going to change the width up in the context toolbar. Then I can begin painting. I'm going to switch my color to white by pressing X, and then add a little bit more of the bokeh effect over here. To zoom back into our picture, we can press Command or Control Zero. And then to see a complete before and after, I'm going to select all of these layers inside the Layers panel, and turn them all off to see the original picture, and here it is with our edits applied. Every picture you work on is going to need slightly different adjustments, but now you know the general principles to edit like Brandon Wolfel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next Affinity Revolution tutorial.